Hello guys, what is up? It is Zebrafy here, and today I'm going to be coming at y'all with another tutorial. I know I've uploaded in a long time, but I'm back now, and I have an updated Windows 10 optimization tutorial. So, one, I know that this is a very important topic to go over. Uh, this is a very important Rock tutorial me, because, like, a lot of people are getting new PCs around this time, or a lot of people may be experiencing difficulties, and this can help you work around them. So uh, yeah, this is an updated version of the Windows 10 optimization tutorial for performance, high FPS, any game you play, this is going to help you optimize it. And yeah guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button before the video gets started, or if you want to wait, you know, don't forget to hit it after if this video helps you out. But anyways, let's hop right into it guys. So the first important thing that we're going to do before we hop into this tutorial is make sure that you do not have any windows updates so the way that you would check this is i just did it pretty quickly but the way that you check this is just type in updates in the bottom left in the search bar and you should see this little check for updates window now uh mine says up to date and it's last check today 9 31 a.m but what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to check for updates and usually there's gonna be something here you know Maybe it could be just like a little antivirus update, or maybe you have like a Windows, like an important update. So whatever it may be, I'd recommend updating Windows before we hop into this tutorial. It can never hurt to update Windows, you know. But uh, anyway, so you're just going to run through the check updates, download, install. Maybe you're going to have to restart your computer to apply the changes, or maybe you're already updated. Whatever it may be, that is what we're going to start off with. Now, uh, since we're here, we're going to head over to delivery optimization and just allow downloads from other pcs tick this off now uh, head over to advanced options and now what we're gonna do is uh you want to go to percentage of me measured bandwidth and what you want to do is you want to check both of these so if th if you just like play games that aren't on the microsoft store so like if you use games on the microsoft store you're gonna want to keep this at 100 ish but uh if you don't worry about like any Microsoft Store, or, like any Windows activity, I'd recommend setting these down to 5%. What this will do is uh, make sure when you're playing a game, when you're updating, downloading a game, what it's going to do is make sure that your bandwidth is reserved for your task so that Windows isn't taking up much of it. But if you experience issues or you don't want to mess with that, just leave it at 100%. But uh, I'd recommend turning it to 5% if you don't use anything from the Microsoft Store. So now what we're going to do is once you've updated all your windows and done that uh, i'd recommend updating windows before this because uh, if you don't have windows updated and then you update windows it'll actually revert some of the changes so you may need to come back and do these again or who knows if you do like a big update in the future but what we're going to do here guys is we're going to hold windows plus r at the same time the windows key and the r key and it should pop up this little run file so what you're going to type in is percent temp percent now I know a lot of you guys have probably seen this already, but I'm just going to run through it because it is a very helpful little thing you can do every once in a while. As you can see, I have quite a bit of files in here. So what you want to do is it should bring this folder up once you type percent, ten percent, and hit enter. You just want to control A kinda, and bam. And now what you want to do is just delete. And it's going to say I'll need to provide an administrator. Just do do this for current items. Continue. Now, uh, most likely, it's going to have a lot of stuff that can't be downloaded, and it's going to say this action cannot be completed because the folder file is open in another program. So you're just going to want to click skip, do this for all current items, skip, and uh, you should have a lot of stuff left still. You should, I mean, if you don't, then that's good, but like this stuff just can't be deleted. It's fine. Not everything has to be deleted, guys. It's still going to help you out and benefit you no matter what, but now what we're going to do is windows plus r again and we have some more temp files that are a little bit more hidden so now we're going to type temp without the percentages so once you do that you can hit enter or okay and it's just going to pull up this folder uh whatever you have in here hold Control plus a to select everything and then right click and delete now you're probably gonna have to click continue or allow administrator privileges for this folder because it's technically off limits because of the fact that it is within the windows folders uh the windows folders are usually restricted so you're gonna have to give permission and it is perfectly fine though guys those are just temporary files that are not necessary anymore so i would just allow that and then delete them all 
Uh, now what we're gonna head into is actually, uh, this one's a little bit preference, but it actually does help your PC run a little bit faster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in performance. So performance and not performance monitor, but the one under adjust appearance and performance of windows. So we're gonna head into here and it's gonna bring up this little thing. So what I'd recommend is, uh, usually it's gonna be like, let windows choose what's best for my computer, which is basically like everything checked on. But these are just like little things that like when you you know when you open up a browser it'll like make it smooth but if you disable these it'll just make it snap and it'll make your computer run a little bit faster and take a little bit of stress off of it so you know it's totally preference but it's a little bit performance at the same time so what i personally recommend is smooth edges of screen fonts because you don't want blurry screen fonts so this makes sure that the fonts still look good and also show thumbnails instead of icons then just click apply and okay now keep in mind, those are the only two that I have checked, everything else is unchecked. Now next what we're going to do is we're going to check out our power plan. So you're going to go to power, you're just going to type power in the bottom left, head into power and sleep settings. Now once we're in power and sleep settings, uh, so screen, when plugged in, turn off after, I'd set this to like 30 minutes. So like, if you just don't touch your mouse or keyboard, your screen will turn off after 30 minutes. But uh, PC... Usually I don't like my PC going to sleep, so I'm just gonna set this to never. This will make it so like if you don't touch your computer for the specified time, it'll literally just like go to sleep. And your PC, you know. Most people don't want that because like sometimes, you know, you're downloading stuff in the background. You don't want your PC falling asleep while you're doing a download or an installation. It's fine if the screen falls asleep though. We've all been there. But uh now you're gonna wanna scroll down, which you can't really scroll down, but go to additional power settings. And right here, uh, so some other YouTubers or guides recommend ultimate performance, but I actually don't recommend that. You know, you can do it, but it's just a little bit of an extra step you can go through. And it's in the end, it's actually not going to be doing too, too much for you. And it is going to be eating up a lot more of your power supply and your consumption. So, you know, your electrical bill is going to be higher. But we're going to want to select high performance and click change plan settings. So turn off display 30 minutes, never, we just went over that a little bit. But now we're going to want to go to change advanced power settings. Okay, so once we're in change advanced power settings, we are going to head into hard disk and set setting minutes for hard disk to literally just zero. And now we can go out of that. So what that does is it makes sure that your hard drive is never going to turn off. So like, you don't want your hard drive to fall asleep. I've never had it happen, but I don't really want to know what happens when that happens, honestly. Uh, now, Internet Explorer, driver script, timer frequency. You can set this to maximum performance. This one won't do too much, but maximum performance is always, you know, the better option in this case scenario. Desktop background settings, slideshow. You can leave that on available. Uh, wireless adapter settings. Power saving mode. Make sure this is on maximum performance. And sleep. Sleep after, never. Allow hybrid sleep on. Hibernate after, never. Allow wake timers, enable. So allow wake timers let me just explain this guys so it's a little bit confusing the way they have this worded but if you disable allow wake timers like you know your pc will be sleeping or your monitors will be sleeping you hit spacebar to turn on the monitors right well if you have allow wake timers disabled and you hit spacebar click your mouse while your monitors are off it's not going to do anything so make sure that is enabled I believe that is what that does. So just make sure it's enabled, guys. Now, USB settings, USB selective suspend setting. You can leave this at enabled or whatever it is on by default. PCI Express, link state power management. Turn this off to off so it's not saving power. Uh, that's just going to make sure that your ports are all running at the highest performance possible. Now, here's an important one, guys. So processor power management. Minimum processor, minimum processor state. I'd recommend setting this to 80, somewhere in between 80 to 100. So, uh, this will just make sure that your processor is running at a pretty high temperature. I wouldn't rec- or pretty high, not temperature, pretty high level in gigahertz, so that it's optimally performing. But I would- I would not recommend setting this to 100, just because you don't want your CPU to always be running at maximum throttle, and that just- that'll really shorten the lifespan of your components in your computer. So I'd recommend 75 or 80 percent, somewhere in there. Uh, system cooling policy, make sure this is active, guys. If you don't have this on active, uh, that means that your system is not going to be very cool, okay? Uh, you don't want your stuff overheating, so make sure this is on active, okay? 
Maximum processor state, pretty self-explanatory. I'd set this to 100 because I'm pretty sure you all want your uh, processor to be able to reach its maximum performance. Now, uh, over here, display, we already went over this. We don't need to look in that. And multimedia settings, when sharing media, prevent idle to sleep, video playback bias, video playback performance bias, and when playing video, uh, you know, you could do optimized power savings, but think about this one. You want optimized video quality or balance, one of those two, because uh, you want your video quality to be well, right? Like, you want good video quality. I think we all want that, so I'm going to recommend keeping it on optimized video quality. Okay, so now that we're done with the power settings, we are going to now disable some startup tasks. So, you know... You open up this little arrow in the bottom right, you guys probably have a lot of stuff open. Like, if you just go down there right now, if you're on your computer, go down there right now, press this little arrow, and comment how many things you guys had open before this tutorial, guys. And then comment how many you have after what I'm about to tell you, okay? If you see this part, guys. But anyway, I have two open, and these are two things that I actually use Discord and Vibrant GUI. Vibrant GUI is probably something that you guys don't know what it is, but... I am actually going to be making a tutorial on that, so look at that in the future. It makes your game look a lot better. But uh, anyway, guys, that video is not out yet, so we're going to stop talking about that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the bottom left again, as always, and we're going to type in Task Manager. Now, we're going to open up this one, Task Manager. Uh, I'm sure you guys have all seen this at some point in time in your life. So we're going to be in the processes. What we want to do is we want to head over one, two, three to the Startup tab. Now, once we're in the startup tab, you guys are going to see a lot of tasks, right? A lot of tasks in here that will be running once you open up your computer. So I have most of these disabled because I don't use them. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look at the status. And you're going to want to go through and think, hmm, do I use that? No, I don't use that. So you're going to disable it. Do I use that? No, I don't use that. Disable. Oh, but I do use that. So keep it enabled. So anything that you know you use that you need to have on like let's say discord is in here guys you don't want discord or steam you don't want it to open manually or you don't want it to open automatically every single time you turn on your computer because what that is doing is one it's eating up your resources and two if for some reason you don't use that which i know you have a lot of programs you probably don't use that open up when your computer first starts it's just going to be sitting there running in the background the whole time your computer is on and that's taking up power and performance that you could be using elsewhere, you know? So, I recommend just going through and disabling these. It takes about 30 seconds, maybe even 15. Just go through and disable whatever you know you do not need. And once you do that, bam, all you gotta do is just X this out. Now, if you guys have a question on whether or not you need something, you can ask me in the comments. Or if you have any question about any of the steps we've been going through, guys. You can always comment and ask me, and I will try to get back to you as fast as possible. I want to help you guys out, guys. You already know how it is. But anyway, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to des disk cleanup. So a lot of you guys, your PC may be running slow because you are low on storage. Or if this is a new PC, you probably don't need to worry about this part. But if you have like an older PC or your PC is not brand new, I want you to type in disk cleanup in the bottom left. Open this one up real quick. So... Select the drives you want to clean up. You can do this on all of your drives separately. You can't do them all at the same time. But I just recommend at least selecting your main drive that you use the most commonly. So mine in that, this case is going to be the C drive. So I'm going to click OK. And it's going to pull up here and tell me that there's some disk space. There's some things that I can remove. And that will free up space, right? So we always, you know, we love freeing up space, guys. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go through. And honestly... I'd recommend just checking every single one of these and then click clean up system files and there we go now it's calculating okay it's making do it again awkward 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 okay here we go so okay it actually found some new stuff but you're just gonna want to do this click ok and then click delete files it's not deleting anything important guys trust me None of this stuff is important, it's just some stuff that you needed, but you don't need anymore. Most likely. Unless it's in your recycle bin, and you accidentally deleted some file that you need, then I'd check your recycle bin first. But most of you probably don't have anything in there. So this should be fine. Now, once this is finished, it's actually taking quite a bit, guys. But once this is finished, 
we're gonna head into a virus scan. Now, what a virus scan is gonna do is it's gonna, you know, it's gonna scan for viruses. So, you guys may have some viruses on your computer, and you may not even be sure of it. But, what I'm gonna recommend is Malwarebytes, guys. I will leave the links for everything we use in the description. So, once you've downloaded and installed Malwarebytes, you should just go through the executable file and just run through it all it, through the installer. You know, you guys have done that for other applications. And then once you open it up, it should give you this screen, something like this. All you gotta do is just click scan. Now, I'm gonna let this run in the background. You can do that as well. And once you do scan, you just you can just minimize it or you can wait for it, you know, whatever. And once you've done with that, we are gonna head into adware cleaner now i'm gonna show you guys the results in a second i just don't want to make you guys watch this whole entire thing because it's gonna take quite a while so i'm gonna move on to the next task but don't worry guys you can just minimize that and do the same as me or whatever you can pause the video and wait etc or you can just keep watching and then rewatch. i don't even know bro but what we're gonna do is adware cleaner it's another malware bites thing but it is an adware cleaner so the last one is removing viruses and malware this is removing adware. So you guys might not know what the difference is, but there is a difference, okay? That's all that you need to know. It'll clean up your computer and do everything for you. So all you gotta do is just click scan. This one's gonna be a lot faster than Malwarebytes, as you can tell. And... Okay, so it detected nothing. So uh, if it detects nothing, skip basic repair. But if it says that it detected something on your system, click run basic repair. And that is literally all you need to know for that one. If you run basic repair, it'll probably have you restart your PC. But, okay, so mine just finished. It detected three things, but I know that these aren't actually malware, so I'm not going to quarantine them. But if anything pops up here and it says it's malware or suspicious or something like that, click quarantine. Now, once you quarantine... You can go over to detection history and just check this box at the top left and click delete and delete whatever is in here. Make sure it just checks everything, delete, yes. And now we're done with malware bytes. We're also done with adware cleaner. Okay guys, so now we're gonna head into GeForce Experience. Now this is an application that I'd highly recommend if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. What we're gonna do in here is we're gonna go to drivers, just check for updates. Make sure you don't have a driver. If you do, download it, express installation, and bam it'll just update your graphics driver to make sure that you know you're you've got all this stuff newest as possible which we always want and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to settings and i'd recommend turning off in-game overlay so what in-game overlay does is it records your screen the whole time that you have your pc on so uh, if you use this to save clips and stuff then i'd recommend keeping it on if you use it frequently and you know that you need to use it but if you don't use it, then disable it because it's going to give you a lot less input delay and more FPS. Okay, so now we're done in GeForce Experience. I'm trying to move through this quick, fast, guys. I'm sorry, this is probably going to be a really long video, but my last video that I did on this wasn't super in-depth. This one is going to be very in-depth, guys. This is going through everything that I could literally think of. I literally went through a notepad, and I wrote down every single topic that I could literally think of. And we're just going through them all, guys. So I'm trying to get you guys set up everything you need set up so that your pc can run as good as possible that's what i'm trying to do here so sorry if it's long it's long guys i apologize but we're gonna keep going now all right so now we're gonna do something that is disabling hardware acceleration so you guys may not know what this is or you may have already done this but in applications like discord what we are gonna do guys is we're gonna head into user settings and we're gonna head down to appearance and you're gonna wanna scroll down under, at the bottom of appearance, you should see hardware acceleration. Just take it off, and now we're done in Discord. That's all you need to do. Now, up here, in whatever browser you use, whether it's Chrome, Microsoft Edge, or Edge, or I, Firefox, any browser that you use probably has this setting. I can't guarantee it does, but most do. So you're gonna wanna go up to the top right, click the three dots, Go to settings, and once you're in settings, you should see a tab that's something like system. Maybe it's not a system, maybe it could also be under appearance, but for mine, it's under system. Now you see use hardware acceleration when available. 
I'd recommend turning this off because it's going to make sure that your PC is not using your GPU to render stuff on your browser. So if you have two monitors or the, and this is open on the side on your second monitor while you're playing a game, it's probably going to make you lose FPS. You may not even notice it, but it will. Trust me. So I'd recommend taking that off. Now, we're going to open up timer resolution, guys. This is a pretty self-explanatory application. I will also leave this linked in the description, but... All you need to do is when you open this, just click maximum, then minimize it while you're playing a game, leave it open. Then when you're done, open it up, default, and exit out. That's literally all it is, guys. It'll lower your latency by about 50%. Even though it's not that much, you probably won't notice it, but it could make a difference, guys. Now, we're going to be disabling mouse acceleration. Now, many of you guys would be surprised to hear this, but by default, Windows actually has mouse acceleration on. So, if you haven't turned this off already, then we're going to go through and turn this off right now, and you guys will probably actually notice a difference for this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to type in mouse in the bottom left. Just go to mouse settings, and it should open this up. Now, go to additional mouse options, and what we're going to do is we're going to head over to pointer options. Now, what you want to do is first you want to drag this all the way to the left. And you want to go over one, two, three, four, five times. And with your arrow keys, you want to go over five times. Or just so it's in like the middle ish. So one, two, three, four, five on the left. And one, two, three, four, five on the right. So it will be exactly in the middle. That is the optimal speed for your mouse, guys. And you should see enhanced pointer precision. That is not a good setting. Untick that and click apply and then hit OK. Just like I had it. And now you have no more mass acceleration on, guys. You should have 100% raw input. It should feel extremely smooth. And that will make sure that your mouse is running optimally. Now, we're going to turn off notifications, guys. So if you have, like, some random notifications that pop up while you're playing games, all you want to do is just type in literally just... This is the simplest fix ever. Just type in notifications and go to notification privacy settings. Actually, no, don't do that, don't do that. So just type in notifications, or not notifications, just type in turn app notifications on or off, click on it, and just turn it off. That is literally all you gotta do, is just tick off notifications. Now, we're gonna turn off location services. All you gotta do is in go in here, allow apps to access your location off, unless you use this, which I assume that you don't, but I'd recommend turning that off. Now, we're going to turn off something called Game Bar, which I know for a fact 99.9% .9 of you guys don't need. So, uh, you're going to want to search up Xbox Game Bar, or you're going to want to go into Game Mode. Make sure Game Mode is off, and Xbox Game Bar, also make sure this is off, and Captures, also make sure Record in the Background while I'm playing a game is off, and that's literally it, guys. So... I almost just showed my IP, but I didn't, luckily. Now we're gonna go into Discord again, I forgot this, but we're gonna turn off in-game overlay. So, all you gotta do is just go into user settings, overlay, and enable in-game overlay, tick it off, bam, that's all you gotta do. Now, uh, we already went over that for GeForce Experience, turning off the in-game overlay, that's pretty self-explanatory, we already went through that, so we can skip that part, but, now, uh, Make sure you also close all unnecessary tasks. So, like, we use Malwarebytes, and I X'd it out, but it's still running. So, right-click, quit Malwarebytes, bam. Whatever you don't need to use, right-click and exit, or right-click and quit, or close, or whatever you need to do. Because you really don't need stuff you're not using running in the background. You guys may not realize this, but it's taking up performance, and it's making your FPS lower, and your input delay higher, which is bad. So... Now I'm going to go through the game settings. So I'm not actually in the game Fortnite itself, but I'm just going to go through the settings that I'd recommend for you guys. So, this is specifically for Fortnite. If you play another game, you could model something like this, or you could search up a different video. Or, even better, you could ask me what your settings should be. So if you just, like, tell me a game, or, like, ask me, like, hey, I have this setting that you didn't go through, like, what should I set it to? You could just ask me something like that in the comments if you're not sure. And, okay, so, I'd recommend the resolution, either 1920 by 1080 which is what most of you guys probably use, or 1600 by 900 One of the two, uh, doesn't really make too much of a difference. You'll get more FPS on 1600 by 900 but, uh, you know, it's totally your choice. 
Uh, now I'd recommend 100% res render resolution, but if you've got a little bit of a lower NPC, I would switch your render resolution to 83%. Now, uh, 83% will look a little bit fuzzy at first, but you'll get used to it very soon, I promise, and it's a big FPS increase, so... Um, for your view distance, I'm gonna rec recommend this to Nier. Some people may have theirs, like, medium or far, but to be honest, you really don't need that much view distance in Fortnite nowadays, unless you're, like, the freaking pro sniper and you really want that high, then you could, but I'd recommend keeping it at Nier, because you can still see, like, 200 meters even if it's on Nier. Uh, shadows off, uh, it just makes it so you can see better, and way more FPS, way more FPS. Anti-aliasing off, uh, if you have anti-aliasing on right now, and you're like, no, I'm not gonna turn that off. Uh, so, I used to be like that too, but, you turn it off, it gives you way more FPS, and honestly, you will, like, thank me, bro. If you turn it off, and you get more FPS, and you get used to it, you'll thank me, because, like, honestly... Once you first turn it off, you're like, ew, this looks really bad, you know, like, I don't like this, but you'll get used to it in literally, like, 20 minutes, I promise, and, no, not even 20 minutes, probably, like, 5 minutes, but it's worth turning off. Now, uh, the next thing we want to do is textures. If you're on a low-end PC, I would put it on medium. If you're on a high, or if you're on a medium to high-end PC, I would set this to high. I wouldn't put your textures on Epic unless you're on like a really high end PC, like an RTX 3080 or 2080 Ti. And also, um, you want, if you have like a really bad PC, like if you have a really low end PC, I'd just recommend all your settings the lowest possible, including textures. But if you've got a medium end PC, put textures on medium, high end PC, put textures on high. Okay, now we can go on to the next thing, guys. What we want to do next is effects low, and no matter what PC you have, keep your effects on low. Post-processing low as well. You don't need post-processing on, guys. Trust me, it's bad. And V-Sync off. Turn V-Sync off no matter what, as well as motion blur. Turn motion blur off no matter what, unless you're trying to, like, make some really snazzy creative clips for YouTube. You know, you could turn it on because it makes it look better, apparently, for montages. But... Show FPS on, uh, that's a preference, but I, I have it on just so I can see where my FPS is at. Uh, now, if you have an RTX 2000 series or 3000 series, so like a newer GPU, a graphics card, you're gonna wanna switch to DirectX 12. If you have a GTX graphics card or an AMD graphics card, you're gonna wanna keep it on DirectX 11. Now, you can experiment with this, there's, you can really look up about these online, but what I just said to you should be pretty credible most of the time. Uh, because, uh, DirectX 12 is a different encoder than DirectX 11, and the older graphics cards aren't really adapted or, like, designed to perform well in this, so that's why I would only recommend trying it if you have a newer graphics card. You can experiment with that, though. It doesn't hurt to do that. Um, now we're gonna do multi-threaded multi-threaded cpu you want to make sure that that is enabled or mul or multi-threaded core processing whatever it is you just want to make sure that that's on now latency setting uh this is a new thing in nvidia i'd recommend putting it to ultra however if you've already changed this in the nvidia control panel in the past i would just leave it it doesn't make much of a difference because it's already a setting that's just been unhidden um all right now uh, colorblind and brightness, this is something that some of you may be asking about, but just to answer your question, colorblind and brightness do not really affect your FPS, this is totally a per personal preference, and you can do literally whatever you want for those. Now, uh, NVIDIA Inspector, uh, it's a, an application that you can get on your computer, I will leave it linked in the description, but once you have NVIDIA Inspector installed, you're gonna get this open once you open it up. Now click on this little driver button, this little settings button on by the driver version, you should have that. Now it will open up this, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna type in Fortnite or just whatever you get, whatever game you play. Keep in mind this will not have every single game, just like more popular games. So uh, you're gonna wanna type in Fortnite and click on Fortnite. Now what you're gonna d wanna do is you can, you can ignore most of these except for 
anti-aliasing transparency super sampling you want to drag this you want to drop this down and select aa underscore mode underscore replay underscore mode underscore off now we're gonna head to texture filtering and there's nothing important in here so we can skip past texture filtering maximum pre-rendered frames under common we're gonna want to set this to two and once you set that to two that's a pretty good number you could always reset this to default threaded optimization uh you want to just leave that on whatever the default is now you can keep scrolling down sli you can ignore all this now other there's not too much important stuff in here guys i'm looking for one specific setting sorry just a little bit different than last time i checked this out okay wait okay maybe the setting is not available anymore okay well there used to be a setting that we could change in here there would be a big difference i'll have to look into that guys i will be making more fps boost settings in the future so i'll make sure to figure out what happened to that and how i can get it to you guys but once you change the ones that we just set up you're going to want to click apply changes now if you are experiencing any issues after you do this tutorial it's most likely going to be because of this i'm not saying that this is going to guarantee you to have troubles but maybe you just accidentally tweaked the wrong thing or something so all you got to do is you just got to open it back up again and click restore current profile to nvidia defaults and then click apply and it'll fix whatever issues you're having um now uh now what i would recommend is your fan settings so not all of you are going to have access to this but if you have like a software like Corsair, or nzxt or so just some way that you can control the fans on your computer make sure to check into this and make sure that your fans are running at a good or decent speed because uh if an example is if you're just playing a game and you know your pc is running really well or like you you've played this game for a really long time but you've never had an issue and all of a sudden it just happens that you just started getting fps spikes and let and uh not fp not lag spikes fps spikes and fps stutters randomly after playing for a while it could be because your pc is overheating so make sure you've got good airflow and make sure you're checking in with your fan settings to make sure that they're all optimal and yeah guys that's honestly gonna be it for the whole tutorial i probably did miss some stuff so i'm gonna be trying to make more tutorials like this so i can go through everything more in depth but yeah guys i hope you did enjoy this tutorial and i hope it really helps you out in games like fortnite warzone you know any games you play i hope that this can help you out and you realize the difference if this did actually make a difference and it helped you out or you enjoyed the video let me know in the comments also if you have any questions concerns or anything you would like to let me know or if you need help with something Thing. just let me know in the comments you guys already know i got your backs i'm here for you guys just like you're here for me thank you guys so much for supporting me make sure to that subscribe and like button if you are new here and yeah guys i'll see you in the next one thank you so much for coming out and yeah it's been zeb peace guys love you all